Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm back with Yorno, and we're going to be talking about... Valcon. So let, let's get into it. What, what's Valcon? So I'm sure by now most of you who've come to this video have seen the news that there is a fan-led Valheim convention coming very soon to your nearest URL or IP address, whatever you're, wherever you watch your videos, it's coming. YouTube, Twitch, etc. Maybe even Facebook, but online fan-led convention, 40 content creators, lots of fun, and an in-game convention with tons of events, panels, lots of stuff to fill out a 24-hour period. So it's going to be running for an entire day. I don't know if everyone listening has been to a convention, but it's basically like a traditional convention. It's like a place you go to physically and panels. And it's kind of like a, a, a 24 hour weekend thing where people are really passionate and they all just share a bunch of stuff about that specific sub content or niche. That's the word, right? So correct me if I'm wrong, but my interpretation is the idea is this is that, but just online and about Valheim. So with the way things are today in today's world, it's very expensive to travel. And with, with the intent of making an in-person convention, that was the intent we, we, we went into this with. And what came out of it was kind of a, a test run. So Iron Gate basically told us, hey, we're, we're curious and interested in what you guys are doing, but we're not going to officially attach ourselves to the project until we kind of see what you guys have. So they essentially gave us the reins on this first one. And in a way, it made sense to do it digitally at first because it was a it was a beta test of sorts. And if it goes well, then that's amazing. And there's a possibility that there could be another Valcon next year. Um, or maybe the year the the beginning of the year after that. Um, and if that goes well with Iron Gate attached to it, then there's a chance that we can have an in-person one in Stockholm, Sweden in 2026, 2027. Oh, that sounds really cool. I mean, either, either way, it's like, uh, the, I mean, I, I couldn't even come to an in-person one personally, so I think the online one's a better option, but obviously that's some bias. But I think that just because it's online doesn't mean it's worse or anything. It literally just means it's more accessible. It's, it's a different kind of thing, right? So uh, just so anyone listening, like, I don't want to demean it by suggesting it's online. I wasn't trying to come off that way. I, I'm definitely quite excited, and I think it's really cool uh, to be even involved as, as much as I am in, in something like this. It, it's like, uh, I've seen in the past that like the best things come from when people don't really know what's going to happen, and they just sort of do things together, and it leads to things that no one really anticipated. And like some of the coolest things in life happen that way, you know? And I get that feeling with, with Valcon. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's like, oh, it's going to make Valheim hugely popular or anything like that. I'm just saying that it seems like something genuinely interesting that I'm really excited to be a part of. And that's, we didn't go into, in, like when we, we started creating this and like brainstorming ideas, we weren't like, let's do this to get big or, or become renowned in some way. We went into it with the idea that We've all been together doing events together as multiple communities. We've been sharing the love of the game with each other within the community. Well, now is that time to show the world. To show the world how much we love this game. And because the game is a sandbox, it makes sense to, to do an in-game convention within a sandbox game. Because you can create a convention world, make things interesting, unique, uh, because you, you're accepting blueprints and builds from, like I said, 40 different communities. And there's going to be little knickknacks and little events you could do on the server, like a fully functional Plinko board and slot machines. And there's going to be lots of fun stuff to do outside of, you know, visiting all the content creators. Yeah, and it's like kind of ideal from a, a server experience perspective, because normally you have to struggle so much to keep people like invested in the long run. But for an event or something... It's like you just have to serve their needs for that period of time. And it's like now with uh, Expand World Prefabs and these other mods and all the community involved, it, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting seeing what, 
how, how it plays out. Uh, one, and one that's thing... only one side of the coin. Uh, the other side of the coin is the 24-hour streamathon type event, where we'll be showcasing, of course, what's going on in the convention worlds, but also showcasing what other content creators are doing in their worlds for, uh, for Valcon. Maybe they're running uh, Hunger Games for that weekend, specifically for Valcon, or maybe like the Planeswalkers were going to be doing the build contest, uh, a Valcon edition. So it's celebrating more than just the ser the server itself and the in-game convention. It's the game overall. Uh, the, yeah, that makes so much sense. And so I, I do want to get more into the format of Valcon. And like you mentioned, there's an in-game thing and a stream and like a focus on other streams, right? But we'll, we'll get more into that in a little bit. Before that, I, I wanted to thank you because I, I see that like it's this kind of stuff most of the people involved wouldn't necessarily make something like this happen. And I'm not saying this is all you, but you very much are getting people who normally, like all these content creators about Valheim, without events like this, they tend to view each other as competition and they're kind of hesitant to work together in these things. And it's really silly, especially in a game like Valheim, because we can learn a lot more by working together and sharing things and making content together than we can by like viewing each other's competition but i think through events like what uh, you're involved with here with valcon it really helps people kind of just get over that and like interact with each other and i have a feeling that that's going to be quite healthy so i really just wanted to say thank you for what what you've been involved with it's it's quite remarkable i i, I just did what i did with planeswalkers just on a larger scale uh, I reach out to people and I get to know them and through my relationships with these amazing people, I determine what everyone is good at. And, and over time, in over, you know, what, almost four years of being in this community, I've met so many amazing people that I essentially, when I created the team, or at least approached the people that were going to be the Valcon staff, I knew already who those people were going to be because I, I like to think I'm pretty heavily active in the, in the scene. So it was it was fairly easy, actually, because I knew Gwen was good at marketing, and I knew B-Vitamin was really good at community management, and I knew Stoned Prophet, I knew he knew the game. So, of course, because of his mod tutorials online, and of course, when we picked up all you script guys, we I've seen it in action. I've seen the videos, I've talked with you one-on-one -on -one with it, I've seen, I have physical proof of, like, if we come all together, we can accomplish anything, really. Yeah, it's just a matter of like opening people's minds to that. And that that's uh so maybe we can get into that later, but for now, let's move move on into the sort of more so people can have a better understanding of what what to expect from Valcon. So you mentioned that there's two kind of different parts of it, right? There's the online part, like a stream that you can watch, and then there is a actual in-game part so you can like join a server and participate in the convention. Could you tell us about one of them? Just pick one to start with. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with the in-game one because uh, I'm heavily involved from that side in the uh, stuff that happens in-game, especially with the events. So with the in-game convention, how it would work is we would have booths of content creators uh not necessarily like stacked on top of each other but pretty close to each other enough enough to not keep re uh instances sorry um from getting too high they'll be kind of in separate zones and then we'll have events on the map marked for the players to to visit and participate in and then uh, at the same time we'll have a schedule uh qr codes posted around the server uh, that players can pull up the schedule and say oh the car's coming at three to do a live build panel in the free build area on the server. Like, all this stuff's going to be happening at the same time on the Valcon, Valcon convention server. And then there'll be an event server where there'll be even larger scale events that are running concurrently with the in-game stuff. So the boosts are there for the players to engage with the content creators to find out more about the content creators still there'll, there'll be qr codes there'll be logos there'll be on the modded server there will be a, a, a tv screen showing uh short videos that kind of pique the interest of people that walk by the idea is just to, to get the word out there that there are other people besides just the people you watch you know religiously everyone has the people they watch on youtube or twitch 
there's more content creators out there. So go and meet them and, and share the love between everyone. And, you know, the whole, the ships all rise together saying, you know, tides raise all ships. So yeah, the idea absolutely. was uh, to benefit large content creators just as much as the small content creators. So maybe, maybe you can clarify a bit for the viewers because they, they don't necessarily know. Okay, you mentioned booths, right? And that there's going to be multi, there's multiple content creators involved. So what the viewers don't know, I guess, is that uh, Giorno and the others invited all of these different content creators to participate and provide content for this event. So it's sort of like a, a like a, a, a mass. Uh, I don't know how to how to how to phrase it, but like it's like a, a, a whole a whole community sort of working on making like a twenty four hour long video, basically. I mean, I know that's not exactly what's happening. But that's like the end result, right? Not only that, but the the entire community is also working in the convention server. So what we'll do is we'll open up the convention server a month or two early. That's not really set in stone yet, as the time frame goes. But we'll let the content creators come in and, you know, they could, when their booth gets placed down with the admin assistance, or if they want to place it down, that's fine. They can... Add little knickknacks to the to the convention world. They can literally, I want a bridge over here. I want a path over here. I want one of my gardens here. And, and all the content creators together can make the convention world just pop. And when you get into that world, you'll see that this is 40 different communities, or however many it ends up being, working together on one vision. And honestly, I've looked. There hasn't been any other collaboration this big in existence. Yeah, for Valheim, uh, that's what I was going to say. I don't think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I guess maybe the way that the adventure map that Dakar and Ninebyte and all of them worked on, the way that it was played by streamers, I think sort of did a kind of community thing that had a lot of people involved. But that wasn't like a specific event as much, if that makes sense, as it was like the... The reality that they released that and then streamers were picking it up and playing through it right i mean it it, it essentially got so big that it became an event yeah, like exactly. your world became so legendary that people are literally playing it on stream uh as an event in a way like i'm playing the adventure map for all this month like to have someone be able to spotlight something uh because it's new or interesting especially in in our community should always be encouraged yeah, especially to the outside world where people may may not be a hundred percent familiar with Valheim. We it's need more of that kind of stuff. It's something I was really impressed by. Um, so obviously, I won't get into the adventure map itself because it is it, it's it's awesome. But I saw I saw that there were a few videos that were critical of it, right? And so I'm used to just a bunch of shit talking online, whatever. But then I go look at the comments on these videos. <laughs> And it's like just hundreds of people just being like, what the fuck is wrong with you? This is amazing. Like, just, just like, and I'm like, wow, we have so much love for what the fans do. Why don't we have that love for Iron Gate? Shit. Like, I, I just thought that was kind of amusing. A little, a little I, I personally have a lot of love for Iron Gate. I mean, they are humans just like we are, and we're not all perfect, but I was a part of another community before this where the developers weren't as transparent with their community. And just having that is a gift. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they even talk to people, they like show their face on YouTube and stuff. Right, they show up like, for <laughs> interviews, they show up for playthroughs, they, they show up for their community. Yeah. Yeah, it's very special. All right, so, so there's going to be this Valcon event and it has these different parts. So I guess maybe we can go into a little bit about your feelings about like, I understand that you did this before. So you're used to doing this kind of thing, right? And we got into some context in our interview. And if any of you want to learn more about Giorno's history, you can watch our first interview. It was actually, I think the first interview in this format I published on the channel or the second one. So uh, you can check that one out. But basically you would organize events and was doing that before this. So what I want to learn, Jorno, is like, what what does this feel like for you? Like, is this just how you play Valheim, or like, what what's going on? I I don't know what it is. Um, I kind of feel like I'm one of those people. Like, there are cer there are certain types of people that will tell you that meaningful relationships can't be made online, 
And I'm one of those people that heavily disagrees with that. Just because we can't sit face to face with each other doesn't mean we can make a meaningful connection, learn something from that experience and apply that to our daily life. And I think I kind of wanted that application in my community. And from there, it just naturally grew. And once I've you know, met everyone, the thing I want to do the most is I want to collaborate with everyone. I want to go into uh, someone else's server. I want to meet their community. I want to see how how they, you know, structure their events. I want to see the curious new things that I've never seen before or new builds that awe me. Um, and I want to see that everywhere. I, I, I wish I had the time to go in every single server and see every single build uh, that was offered there, but I don't have that time. But I will do as much as I can to make sure that the community can come together so that everyone can see those builds together. Yeah, you, you bring up a, an interesting point because uh, I've noticed that there's, if you want to validate a builder's experience, to, just let them show you what they're working on. Like, oh my God. Gosh, they go nuts just to show somebody. And it, it's, it's really interesting how that part of the experience, like if they don't get that, if there isn't anybody genuinely interested in what they're doing, or if you don't take the time to look at it. And I often like, like people build too much stuff on Palm. I don't even know about all the things they've built. So I can't always look at things. And I, sometimes I feel a bit guilty because I understand that it, it is actually a huge part of their experience. Like they get something and to, to refer to and allude to what you were saying earlier about like meaning and online interactions like pe people say that kind of thing but what they really mean is that like if you're not developing a real life interaction because of something online that's bad but it is absolutely not true just like you said that you can't get meaning from online interactions um it it, it the reality is most people get more support from online interactions than the physical people in their life, you know? So I, I completely agree, agree with you there. And I think that one of the things that happens on Valheim is people get this sort of validation, especially when they're building. And like people really want to show the th all the things they've built. And it's kind of like a funny trope, right? Because sometimes it's kind of like, okay, you've seen a lot of things. It's very cool. Yes. But it's so meaningful for them, you know? You know the saying, like, be kind to everyone because everyone's, you know, fighting their own unique fight that you're not aware of? I, th I think I've heard it phrased differently. I th <laughs> maybe that's It's the like, be kind always saying. because yeah. someone's always going through a fight. Yeah, I don't know the exact saying. I butchered it because, yeah, I'm not really a huge public speaker. But that, that, that ethic was the same thing. We created Valcon. We created the idea of Valcon with that in mind. We wanted it to be a place where everyone could come together and forget and let go of any personal discrepancies, uh, any disagreements with other creators. To you know, just let it all go and just yeah, come together and you celebrate give them a the game. To let it go. And this is happening on Valheim's birthday. This is happening on February first through February second. So it's literally there as a giant birthday party to Iron Gate and Valheim. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not even about you watching this video. It's about everyone together, and that's what Valcon is. So, so I guess for you then, really, it sounds like this is just how you exist. Like you, this is how you play. C could you imagine playing Valheim and like not getting people involved in communities and stuff? Yeah, I know there's people out there that. Oh, no, I, I don't mean about other people. I mean about you, personally. Me. Like, you. I, I don't know. I'm probably as extroverted as you can get. I couldn't imagine playing a game that allows ten players in a survival sandbox where it requires you, as a group, to progress. I, I just don't see how that couldn't be a social experience. If it was a single-player game, you would come in with the expectations that this is a solo experience and my own perspective is all that matters at this point. And of yeah. course you could share that perspective with other solo players, but that sh experience is never shared. Yeah, I think and, maybe people start with that perspective in Valheim, but they don't stay with it. Yeah, so, Valheim is one to ten players, so uh, you can experience solo and you can experience as ten people, and I think that's a strength of Valheim. 
for sure. Yeah, it's almost like there's this magic. Uh, there's something that happens. Like, let's say someone is just playing one, one single player experience. And then there's another person in the world also having a single player experience somewhere else where they never see each other. Even just them seeing that someone else is there does something to the experience that makes it more meaningful for people. And that, that's something I like to bring attention to because it seems to be something that we, we tend to overlook in, in Valheim in general. Sorry, f from like the development perspective, that uh, it's sort of like we, Valheim is like a board game, but in practice, like people meet through Valheim. So it doesn't really make sense, right, to design it in a way where they have to know each other beforehand because the reality is people meet playing the game. So you're going to like basically produce players in the game that don't know each other if the game works. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's almost like the when they designed the game, they were designing it with communities in mind. Even though some of the, the later point decisions regarding Ashlands don't really align with that idea, I feel in their hearts when they designed it for 10 players, they really wanted 10 players on there. And I don't know, it feels lonely. It does. It, it feels lonely when you're alone in Valheim. I don't know what it is. Uh, the game is... Uh, I don't know. You're, you, Everyone builds in different places. So you have typically, usually, by now, most people know about instances, so they build in different places. But you, you, when you're in your own zone and your own island off in the middle of nowhere and there's no one online it feels lonely yeah that's another uh something i've noticed with the no portal and no map mode is that it changes the way people play and like they seem to work together more L not because of like some ideal or something but literally just because the gameplay loops in the no map no portal world are such that it's like more beneficial to be communal and like go where other people have been and like connect paths so you don't get lost. And it's, 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 a, it's an interesting uh, learning experience because the vast majority of the Valheim player base has, has like no interest in no map, no portal mode. But it's, all, it's honestly such a beautiful thing. Like I, I, I sometimes wish like there was a way to show people like, wow, if, if they were just willing to give it a, a shot um, some, sometimes some of the problems that we associate with Valheim actually come from the way we play Valheim, if that makes and sense. And that stuff, yeah, and that stuff can be showcased at Falcon. We, during the live stream -a -thon, we will have content that is submitted by the communities. And if that content happens to be a rundown of a server with no portal, no map mod, and how that experience differs from your typical experience and how it's unique and interesting new way to play uh, i think that type of content can definitely you know serve a purpose yeah maybe i should do something like that <laughs> yeah I, i've been excited about the panel but uh so whatever by... you're whatever you're uh motivated whatever motivates you whatever you know keeps you getting up and and still interacting with this game all, what motivates you I want to see that content. Uh, that's a good requirement. So, so speaking of the content at Valcon, we were talking a bit about Valheim in general, right? So to get back on, on that subject, what, what do you sort of... I, I know I'm going to ask you to use some conjecture here, but what kind of content are you anticipating people will submit? Like, because so far people know there's booths, they know content creators are doing things, and they're making submissions and working together, and there's this event, but they don't know, like, what are the videos? Make sense? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, st I'll, I'll answer your question also with a question. What can you do in Valheim? Oh, gosh. And that is exactly my answer when you <laughs> ask me what kind of content I'm expecting. There's Valheim in and of itself. I've literally seen a person create a reenactment of an old 80s movie in Top Gun with Valheim. I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm expecting anything and everything. The machinima era. 
Yeah, I've, I've been hoping that maybe like some somebody, did, I think we talked a little bit about this in the previous call, but did you ever watch much Machinima for like World of Warcraft or these kind of games? I did. Yeah, there, there was a huge scene, right? Like, like, would you say there were thousands of different kind of Machinima videos you could watch about that one game? I know that there was so much content that you could literally sit down for like a days and just have, yeah. And I also watched Red vs. Blue. Big into Red vs. Blue from back in the day. Yeah, that, that was a great show. I haven't, I haven't thought about Red vs. Blue in a while. Wow. Talk about old school. Indeed. So, I'm, the reason I asked the previous question is because I've noticed that people, people like to show their buildings, as I mentioned. So, so I was curious if, if you thought that because um, while it is true, obviously, that people can do anything in Valheim, um, while you and I may know that, most people don't necessarily know that. So other, like, let's say you take the average Valheim player or person who has played Valheim and has some interest in it, um, they might answer that question with, well, what can you do in Valheim? You could build something, or you could fight bosses, or you could explore. Or you could garden. But maybe their list has a finite end. Makes sense? Yep. You could do a speed run. You could do a trophy hunt. You could do a carve race. You could do a, a longship PvP battle. Yeah, it goes You could on do forever. archery. But, that, could but that's because you understand it, right? But this, is, this is the thing I'm getting at, is that how do we speak to the people who honestly have judgments about Valheim? They have a, an impression that Valheim is a certain kind of game, maybe because they've heard somebody they trust say something that wasn't true, these kind of things. Because I, I'm, I'm asking you this because I'm, I'm sort of under this impression that there's all these kind of Valheim lurkers who, like, they actually, like, had an experience and they really liked it, but because of how much social media they use and other things... They're sort of convinced that, like, oh, Valheim sucks and is a dead game and it was all ruined because the, the, the terrain change that was ages ago that, you know, because players used to be able to change the terrain more freely. And then, like, you can literally find videos on YouTube that are like, oh, when Iron Gate killed Valheim with its <laughs> It's like, really? <laughs> I find typically that those players are either solo players or players of small groups that have either disbanded or... Um... I don't. Yeah, I, I typically do, typically don't find those types of players that come into my community or deal with them in other servers, but they do exist because I hear the stories about them almost every day. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, yeah, I guess, I guess more what I'm getting at is like there there's a lot of people out there who they think that Valheim is one certain thing basically, and at this point. Even with without expand world prefabs in this thing, these things, maybe it's not. Um, and and I'm just saying that even even with things like, for example, uh, using upgrade world mod, uh, that that's been around for a while at this point. I, I don't know exactly when it came out, but I, I want to say at least two years ago. And it makes it so that you respawn dungeons on the server, right? And like from you and our perspective. Uh, everyone knows about this, right? Uh, people who manage servers and are in Valheim communities understand this. But what what I'm getting at is that there's like a huge amount of players, Valheim people, who like want to be part of a community. They want Valheim players to play with. They just don't. They don't know how <laughs> how to go about that. If that makes sense. There's even people listening who literally would love to play with other people, but they don't know how to go about like joining a server and doing that and maybe you could share a little bit about that because i don't think it's it's I like uh go on so valcon is that it's that place where everyone comes together every year to celebrate valheim's birthday and it's an also it's also a way to meet other communities so if you're a solo player and you love valheim as much as we do but you just you felt like you haven't met that right community yet. Valcon's your opportunity to go through and take a look at all the different content creators. They all have communities. 
and find the one that's right for you. And if that doesn't work out, you know, you can, while you experience the convention, you can take notes or take screenshots of the QR codes. And after the fact, and then even after Valkyne's over, you can still use what you learn there to apply it to your Yeah, it's not like the communities vanish after Valkon ends. Yeah, these are all active places where, you know, people still enjoy the game to this day. And it's just getting those communities known. And by creating such a massive event, it's like, it's almost bringing people in to, to look at paintings where they can't look away and their eyes are strapped to their head, back of their heads, their eyelids. Yeah, it's, it's like, look at be. these, like, these are the, these are the 40 people that are amazing. Go interact with them because they all are unique and awesome in their own way. And I guarantee you, if you don't come out of the event finding something, even if it's just you, you met some a single person that loved the game as much as you do, then it's a win for Valcon. I mean, there's so many things people can just, they can be entertained, they can learn. There's so many different aspects of it, right? So I think people, like people who are listening, they might have an impression because in general people are not very aware of what's possible with mods in the first place there's a lot of um preconceptions about modding in general it's viewed as very very uh temporary like very much like oh you start modding your world it's only a matter of time before the whole world is ruined <laughs> like in many cases that can be true but my, my point is that there's a lot of strong perceptions and beliefs in players so I, I would imagine that they they sometimes have a hard time imagining the kinds of things. Like, like for example, you, you so easily came up with different races and different events and different things that people can do. But other people, they, they seem to struggle a little bit with that. So I, I'm excited because it does seem like it, it's like I've noticed for a while that there is this, this un there's this group of Valheim players who have this unmet need and I can sense it and I've interacted with them and I can tell that they really want to have that Valheim experience but they haven't like clicked in with a group that they can actually play with or I mean maybe I'm projecting my own experiences because I would play with friends in my personal life and they just didn't care as much they'd lose interest really quick and that's nothing like the experience of playing with other people who will just keep logging in and playing and like it's like it's it's a it's an amazing situation to be in and i'm really excited because as you mentioned i was hoping actually that you were gonna point that out actually that oh you could watch valcon and then you would learn you would you would learn where where these other communities are and that that is a, a great point because it's the thing that sort of i i just i know these people are there and they have this need, and if that need is met, cool stuff will happen out of it. Like, people will get involved in projects that they didn't even, they didn't even know. Like, the, the things just grow organically. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it, the content creators will always be at the heart and soul of the event. We wouldn't be able to do the event without them. And, of course, we wanted to highlight them so that when people come in, they can find that special place they've been looking for. And, and we're not guaranteeing you like, by going in that you'll find that place, but we're going to show you as many of them as possible as we can fit into a Valheim server logistically and give you as many opportunities to meet those people as possible. Yeah, and even then there'll be content made about that that stays on YouTube and people will make content about that content and it'll... It's like a ripple effect, right? So, I like to think of it as the, the Yggdrasil tree. And it roots up, and the root of the tree is Valkon. And Valkon just spreads its roots up into different limbs. Which, of course, are all the external events people do in Valkon-related events in their own communities. That's all the different branches branching out. All of it comes back down to the heart and soul, which is the game. And the celebration of it. So... Another question about Valcon itself. Um, let's say that someone listening wants to, I'm imagining it's closer to the event, and they want to learn more. Because obviously, like, okay, it's 24 hours long or a server. How do they know, like, what time to join to see what? Where do they go to get that kind of information? 
So there, there will be a website coming pretty soon here, which will pretty shortly after that have the full schedule. People could go in there and see exactly when Kaizen's doing his thing or Dakar's doing his thing or, or even just minor things in the convention world, like uh, maybe someone's doing uh, a panel in the convention world on how to make a chandelier. That kind of stuff will all be documented on the website, and of course we'll have that stuff running on the on the stream. We'll have an MC from each region over the over the over the 24 hour period. We're hoping for one from North America, one from Europe, one from Oceania, and they will guide in the flow of the event and check in with all the other events and kind of keep viewers, you know, on tab like what is going on with the convention. And all this will be tied together, um, of course, through all of our socials, all of our social media. So it sounds like there's going to be more than one way to interact with the convention and more than one thing to watch if one is interested. Essentially, what will happen is I'm hoping people will go into Twitch or YouTube and they'll keep seeing streams with Valcon tags. And, and it just keeps going and people are just celebrating together. Even if they're not in the convention, they're celebrating on their world somehow. And I'm hoping the entire community can come together and celebrate the game's birthday. And it'll just be a spectacle to see. Yeah, I mean, that it, it, many it, it, streams for one event. It sounds fun just from the perspective of people joining the event in Valheim, even if... Uh... Yeah, I, I have a feeling that it'll spawn a bunch of new playthroughs. Not like loads and loads of them, but I mean that... But what I've noticed, at least, is that when you actually start engaging with people who are genuinely passionate about something, you don't need to reach that many of them. Um, I'll just share a quick caveat, or a quick... Let's call it a metaphor, an example... So I used to do consultations, right? And I would like basically would help people learn about something uh, online, whatever. There were usually people in Morocco who spoke like very little English and were talking to me from like a cheap cell phone in a coffee shop or something. And it was it was a, a really cool experience. But what what I learned is that. How do I get? How do I explain this? I lost my train of thought. Tragic. No worries. Ah, yes. Okay, now I remember. So basically. Um, in the past, I used to work with other people, schedule calls, consultations, all this kind of stuff. And it's really common for people to not show up. And you have to, like, reach out to them and, like, make things convenient for them, right? Whereas just when I would release these videos, like the one I did with you, and the, I think I've done, like, five or six on YouTube. And it's not like they get loads and loads and loads of views. But what I've noticed is that they're quite impactful, even though, like, I can, I can make a tutorial, right? And the tutorial will get, like, a couple thousand views or whatever. But aside from the views and the fact that people are learning from it, it doesn't necessarily have an impact of, like, oh, people reach out and want to do stuff and do that sort of thing. Whereas those interviews, just with a couple hundred views, got dedicated playtesters, a couple of which have been playing daily on Path of Magic, since our interview together. And th this has been a, a really interesting experience for me because it's shown that when, when you get enough really passionate people about a specific thing and you put them together, you don't actually need that many people. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and ultimately, in the, in the end run, it isn't really... The amount of views like you get is awesome, and that's just a bonus of making good content. But it trickles down. Like where people start talking about, I saw JP's Valheim, and now I know know where to start with EWP. Now they show two friends how to do it. Those two friends are in EWP. Now they become admins. Now they're teaching a team of people how to use EWP. 
So you, you may, just by making that one video, and you may have only got a thousand views, now, I don't know, 2,000 people know about EWP? Because everyone's going to go tell a friend. Ah, uh, yeah, but the, so this is the thing I'm getting at, is that uh, it doesn't seem to be the tutorials that have that effect. That's what I was trying to suggest, that it, it's actually just the act of speaking with another person who's passionate about it. Something sort of magical happens when you like do that and you put it on YouTube. So like the content, it has more impact, if that makes sense. And like, so one of the most obvious ways that I can say that is that for all the interviews I've had, uh, I haven't like been doing calls to action in the beginning of the video. I haven't been going like, oh, if you, if you want to get interviewed, like I haven't been pushing that. And like, I had to used to do that kind of thing to get people to, you know, actually remember. And, but with the Valheim interviews, like the people who schedule calls are so genuinely interested in Valheim that they reach out to me and ask to have an interview. I don't even have to like reach out to them. And I, I don't mean that that means like, I don't have to do something. I'm saying that that's how passionate these people are. It's, it's markedly different than other um, scenes that I've been involved in. And it's, it's vastly something different. Very interesting. With, with the last scene I was in, uh, it, it's in the RTS scene. It is not like that. Uh, people are typically more uh, introverted in nature when it comes to their content creation. They're they're not as uh, open to collaborating as easily. And I I don't know it's something about Valheim and in the players it it creates and the in the relationships it it creates. People are super passionate about this game and they meet awesome people and of course they're going to get attached and the and they just want to share their love with the world. Yeah, it's, it's almost like there's like, they just wish it was a bit more popular, you know, so there was enough. Uh, I, I get this sense from people that, okay, like, I, I've just been making Valheim videos. I don't give a crap that, like, yeah, I was making Valheim videos when it was the lowest point of Valheim playership ever. And, like, I just, once I started making Valheim videos, I've been making Valheim videos because I have this notion that you can't just change the game you're making videos about if you're trying to get a niche, establish yourself in a specific subject, if that makes sense. You have to literally just stick with it. But what the reason I bring that up is because it's like, it, it seems that most people, like they really want to make content about Valheim. They really enjoy doing things about Valheim, but they feel for whatever reason that there isn't enough attention to make it worth it, if that makes sense. And I, I just say that just because I can tell like, there's a lot of like uh, Valheim content creators that make really good videos, but then you can tell like they stopped making Valheim videos and they're just making like random videos about other games. And like they probably wouldn't do that unless they felt there was like demand for the Valheim videos. Does that make sense? So, like, that, that's kind of like one thing I hope for people in general, just is that on one hand, they can learn to let go and just learn to enjoy the process. But on the other hand, I also respect that people really don't have that much time. And especially these days, uh, things are really expensive. People have things to take care of. You never know what's going on in their life. And those of us who have the luxury of even spending like four hours a day on a computer, like that, that's an extreme luxury as far as like people in the world are, are concerned. And I think sometimes it, it sort of has more to do with that reality. But, but it, it is both, you know, it is that that we we only have so much time and also that people in general are in different circumstances so it's just important to keep all that in mind yeah i i agree um and that's kind of why we're taking the approach with valcon is to present three different major regions for people to to access because you i don't want everyone you know, to feel that this is a, just a North America thing or just a Europe thing. I want everyone from every major region to feel like they have an opportunity to log in, even if they have to walk down the street to their local coffee shop, uh, it, just to log into the Valheim convention server and run around for an hour. Yeah, or even just watch the stream at a reasonable time. You know, because realistically, that's like how people, that's what's more accessible to those kind of people. 
Um, like Valheim's definitely, it's a, it's a game of the privileged class. The, if you look at the demographics of who plays Valheim, there, don't get me wrong, there are people in like African nations and other countries and Asia and these things who, who play Valheim, but in general it's very, very niche. Even in, uh, in the US, it's not, not a very popular game, it's not a mainstream game. Whereas if you look at like the, the percentage of the Valheim traffic on like Google Trends, from Europe, it's literally Finland, Scandinavia, Sweden, like all of these countries are where most of the Valheim player bases are from. And in general, the rest of like the world doesn't really know about Valheim. So I've sort of, I've always wondered about that. Like, is there a way, is that just because it's a game about Vikings and like, oh, does that mean only people who are Scandinavian can appreciate it? I, so I've kind of wondered, like, does that mean there's all these untapped Valheim players who just haven't gotten a chance to enjoy it yet because like they don't have computers and stuff or what do you think honestly valheim itself is a pretty low impact game in my opinion i know that my wife was able to run valheim on her dell de desktop she bought from walmart with no graphics card it only had in on on board graphics and she was able to run valheim at the lowest settings essentially yeah, she was able to oh, play. it's almost like it's almost like back in the day where you could get Doom to run on a calculator. <laughs> it's yeah. like eventually you'll be able to run Valheim in on your onboard, you know, your thing in your car, or maybe I don't know on a on a small tablet of some sort. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe so. So I think about this. This is a bit of a tangent, but I guess at this point it's later on in the video. It's probably fine. So I live in Nicaragua. Nicaragua is a Spanish-speaking country. Um, you can sort of think of it as like maybe 10 to 20 years in the past from the U.S. In certain ways. In other ways, it's ahead. In other ways, it's further behind. It really depends what context you're looking at. But it's sort of as like time traveling. And what, what, what's quite interesting here is that like PC gaming, oh God, like that is not a thing here. Like it shows me like, wow, there's there really are probably more humans than not who aren't gamers yet simply because they haven't the circumstance to produce generations of gamers in most of the rest of the world hasn't yet occurred but it is occurring does that make sense but we come from a country well well i'm speaking as like an american right i'm you're you're american right yep yeah so we, we come from a country where these events have already unfolded and we are a product of the generations of gamers that were produced by all these industries. Whereas in places like Nicaragua and most of the, so to speak, developing, tangent, that's bullshit, but whatever, developing world, um, th those events haven't occurred yet. So there's all of these humans, all of these people who basically like their exposure to video games is cell phones and stuff they see on YouTube. They watch streams about stuff they see things on social media, like Facebook, that sort of thing. And when they do do games, it's like PlayStation 2 era, everything's bootlegged, so you can just get whatever game you want. You go to the market, buy a like cheap, cheap disc. You maybe get a Nintendo DS Lite that's flashed, so you can just download whatever. Like That's how people hear game. And it's given just an interesting perspective into this whole sort of generation of people that might become interested in Valheim at some point. I, and so the only reason I say that, I'm not, I'm not saying this is super relevant, it's just because at first I was looking at the demographic data and it was sort of confusing how clearly the line is. Like you can look at the map and just see it's where Scandinavian influence was. The people play Valheim mostly where there were Vikings. And, and, like and that, that's in, the, go ahead. No, yeah, go on. I was going to say that that's a part of why we wanted to do like the whole double, you know, both sides of the coin thing with the streamathon in the in game convention because we know not everyone has an opportunity to ha even have the game or have a computer to run the game. So the streamathon will be able to share the love of the game with everyone. Uh, as it's running 24 hours, we'll have content creators in all the major regions. So when you know, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, when you're waking up and having your morning coffee, there will be someone streaming 
a major event for Valcon or doing something with Valcon during that time fi frame. So I'm hoping that we can reach those people that aren't quite familiar with Valcon that, are, you know, go on Twitch and see 50 people are streaming Valcon. You know, maybe that'll grasp their attention. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I mean, surely that will happen. I mean, it's inevitable, right? Yeah, it'll create a lot of new players, in my opinion. And so, so one thing I want to ask, just because I have this chance to speak to you now, um, do you think it's necessary to be interested in Vikings as a concept before one is ready to be interested in playing Valheim? Like, if you imagine people who've never played the game before, let's say they would actually love the game if they play it, but for whatever reason they haven't played it yet. Do you think that, like... Because I was trying to wrap my head around that cultural thing, because I was like, I don't, I don't buy it that it's just because, okay, people in Africa aren't from the Viking land, and only people from the Viking land care about the game. And in my head, it's like, there must be more to it than that. Like, why is it? that these people in other countries like have almost no notion of this game whatsoever. And so, so it got me wondering if maybe it has to do with like the existing archetypes in our culture. For example, like, I mean, like if I say Viking, what does that mean to you? I see what you're saying. And, and just to briefly look, God of War sold over 66 million copies. And that definitely leans into uh, you know, mythology based on Norse and Greek and all that sort of stuff. And that did really well um, across almost ev every major country uh, yeah. that has access to those. Yeah, I mean, that game things. is huge here. But it's also part of the PS2 era, and that is the I think, most dominant era of all gaming, basically. I think what what it is with Valheim is that it... I don't know, for some people, some, some people find it a little bit too difficult, in my opinion, because it's a sandbox brutal survival game that may turn people away from the game and, and in my opinion the game can be brutal but i don't know if i would describe valheim as brutal i mean if you look it up on steam that's what it says yeah yeah it's and funny. that can turn as soon players as you away said that, i was like i was like I, I don't feel that way but maybe i'm delusional <laughs> it is hard and i think they should highlight the difficulty but i think that's a double-edged sword to to call your game brutal and that specific you know moniker it, it it makes your game feel unforgiving and and it's going to be a slog to get through and that that's not what valheim is valheim right. is a game you can take your time with and really feel everything and stop and smell the roses type game I mean, it's a game that not not just you can take your time with it actively rewards you to take your time play it patiently it really does. Like that that's something that is so amazing about Iron Gate. Like the fact even that they have the rested system in the game. Like I don't I don't know if people think about what that means, but that shows that they have like a fundamental understanding that like you have to influence how players play. If that make like Western culture in general, and like obviously they're in Sweden in these areas, right? They're much they're, they're more into breaks in general as a concept, right? Whereas our, our, our culture, Western culture, is very, very anti-break, very, like, obsessed with working all the time. So for me, it, it's so refreshing with Iron Gate to see a game that literally builds in taking breaks and resting into their gameplay loop. Like, that, it's just top, top shelf, top shelf. I don't stuff. think we would have gotten the game we did if it wasn't made by the people that made it. I know that sounds like something that would be obvious, but the reason we got Valheim the way it is is because of the people at Iron Gate and their, you know, their cultural influences and what they enjoy and take influences from, that made the game. So if I, I just don't if Iron Gate released a racing game, would it would everyone have felt the same way about it? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, I guess that's the thing. It's so hard to, it's hard to speculate, you know? Because, like, I mean, I'm sure if people in Iron Gate wanted to, that they could. But it wouldn't be, like, the same people necessarily who like Valheim, right? It's, like, a different kind of player base. But also, one of the first things in the game was, like, a space racer called the Tolroco Flyer. And it's still... Yeah 
in the game files. So like, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe they originally wanted, like that was the idea, you know? It, it, it seems to be one of those projects that like, like I mentioned earlier in the conversation, some of the best things in life, they, you can't imagine them. They, they come from more than just what you can perceive is going to happen. And I have a feeling that happened with Iron Gate. Like whatever, whatever was in place with everything happened in a way where they were able to get in over their heads and make a game and it grow and sort of like not, I, I doubt they, they planned for things to play out the way that they did. But now at this point, I mean, they've been able to like have the game released. It's reached loads of people. It's on consoles, it's on Mac. They have a board game. Have you, have you played the board game? I have not. Ah, I, I want to. I like genuinely, I know, I know some people feel like, ah, whatever, why are they just adding these kind of things? But like, I, I love that kind of stuff, to be honest. And it looks pretty cool. Like, I like the little figurines. I don't uh, want to promise anything, but we're trying to get something set up with uh, the manufacturers of the board game to maybe get them to do a small panel about it, or maybe even just have a small live playthrough of the board game to show people, you know, hey, look at this, it's another way to play Valheim. And it's another way to reach people, like you said, who may not own a computer, but now can play a board game. Yeah. Now they can share the love of the game in the community in a different more way. More like your family, you know, who doesn't like playing video games all the time, but it's a board game, so they're more more likely to get into, I, I don't know, to be honest. Valheim it reaches the tabletop community. Yep. All right, you all know. Is there anything you want to tell everybody? We're at the hour point, so I don't want to go on unless you want to go on. I'm happy to keep talking, by the way, but this nope, is your I'll... time if there's anything else you want to address. Nope, just going to tell everyone to mark your calendars for the first weekend of February in 2025, the first through the second. Valcon, the first ever fan led Valheim digital convention and streamathon, will be on your nearest social provider, whether that be YouTube or Twitch or Facebook, etc. etc. We'll be on Reddit. We even have an X page. Go follow us, see what we got going on, check out all the content creators, share the love of the game with everyone. And that's it. Fantastic. It was a pleasure to speak with you again. And uh, if any of you are interested, you can always just look in the description of the video. Whatever links are relevant to get to their website will be there. And if you want to be in one of these conversations, then you can reach out to me. I'm interested in having interviews with anybody who feels motivated to talk to people, talk with me about Valheim. I don't care if you have a community or if you don't, or if you make mods or if you don't. All I require from you is a willingness to talk about Valheim and show up and then I'll publish the video. So if you're interested in that, you can comment or reach out to me. And otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Oh, nice.